Kerbal Space Program 1 was a technical masterpiece. It was one of the top rated games on Steam, being praised by NASA, had 95% positive reviews, and sold well over 5 million copies, making it one of the best selling Steam games of its time. But this is pretty much where the game's success ended. The sequel was set up to soar even higher, but ended up being too ambitious, four times over budget, buggy, and a complete disaster, with the entire studio being shut down and the team being laid off. So what exactly happened? How did the first game get created and succeed? And how did the game that was on top of the world come crashing down so hard? The first game's development started in April 2010, when a Mexican marketing studio hired a game designer named Philippe Falange, and he had a pretty cool idea for a game. See, as a kid, he would tape fireworks together to make rockets, and strapped tinfoil men to them before launching them into the sky to blow up. <laughs> in June 2011, the first public version 0.7.3 was released, with no moon, no map, no struts, and a bunch of other weird gimmicks, but despite this, it was downloaded around 5,000 times. Something about this game resonated with players, and so development continued. On the 18th of July 2011, version 0.8.5 was released, which brought symmetry, saving, and a clock. In August of that year, they added struts in version 0.9, and development continued on the free alpha until 2013, with features like a map view, RCS control, time acceleration, real water, a moon moon to land on, fuel lines, and much more was all added. But there was a pretty big issue. See, this game was very ambitious, was still a few years from full release, had a large team, and was bleeding money. But the perfect set of events are most likely the only reason that this game got as far as it did today. See, on the 20th of March 2013, Steam launched its early access program, and KSP was one of the first 12 games accessible on it from the very beginning. Around this time, also, YouTubers like Scott Manley, a literal astrophysicist, introduced hundreds of thousands of people to the game. The game kept being improved over the course of a year, adding a career mode, contracts, space planes, and the ability to blow up your home base. And on the 27th of April 2015, version 1.0 was finally released, which added female carbonauts, added heating during re-entry, and added resource mining. The game was soon translated to multiple languages and began being ported to consoles. And that same year, the game ended engine was upgraded from Unity 4 to 5, which fixed memory issues with mods and improved the graphics of the game considerably. On the 30th of May 2016, the original creator left the game, and one year later, in May 2017, the game was acquired by Take-Two Interactive, who started releasing paid expansion packs, like the Making History and Breaking Ground expansions. Remember these, these will be important later. The game kept being updated for almost four years after this, with the final update to the original game, 1.12, being released in June of 2021, adding four new launch sites, more fireworks, and a bunch of other quality of life improvements. Objectively, the first game was on top of the world and had built up a loyal community that loved the game. But trouble was brewing behind the scenes. See, almost immediately after Take-Two acquired KSP, they started pre-production on the sequel, and they knew that they were sitting on a gold mine. In 2017, they found a studio called Uber Entertainment, which would handle the development of the sequel, and they gave two terms for the sequel's development. One, they had $10 million in budget, and two, they had two years. They honestly had the perfect conditions to make a game bigger than the original, but obviously that was not the case. So what went wrong and at what point? So the original idea was to take the original code, polish it up, add new graphics and content, and sell it as a completely new version. And this is where the original budget and two-year timeline came from. But the creative director was a huge fan of the original game and had a much broader vision. And then he asked like, do you have any ideas for what you would want to do with it? And they, it, they just started pouring out of me like a fire hose. Like, yeah, yeah, we gotta yeah. have interstellar, we gotta have colonies. You know, it was just like it, it, yeah. everything I wanted to do. He wanted to completely reimagine the game instead of just doing an update. And this was the first problem. The budget and time frame were completely inadequate for such a reimagining. But this wasn't all. See, for the sequel, they needed experienced developers familiar with physics. And another issue was that the sequel's development was top secret. This led to a huge problem. First off, they could not outsource recruiting developers to another company, since it was a secret. And secondly, they were not even allowed to tell people they were hiring, what the game was, or even what type of game they were hiring for. 
And what's even worse is that due to budget constraints, they were only able to hire junior engineers, with almost none of them having significant experience. The scope of the game continued to snowball bigger, now including features like colonies and multiplayer, which were communicated to the devs as non-negotiable despite the completely unrealistic two-year deadline. What's even more is the inexperienced developers had to build on the original codebase from the first game, which was almost a decade old, scrappy, and messy, instead of building a new one. As this guy that writes software, I understand the original game is absolutely full of technical debt. It breaks in all sorts of weird ways. And what made it even worse was that due to the game being a secret, they were not allowed to communicate with the developers of the original game for help. I'm just, I'm still flabbergasted. So they got, they got a dump of the KSP1 code base, but they didn't have anybody who knew anything about it. No. So why was the game so secret? Well, at this time, the original game team was working on an expansion pack, which would come out in May 2010. But also that year was the year the breaking ground, the DLC for KSP1 came out, that came out in May 2019. So it would be a bit silly for like Kerbal 2 to be like a known project at that point, because then who's going to buy that DLC? with the knowledge that the sequel is going to be out the following year. But after this, in August 2019, Kerbal Space Program 2 was finally announced to the public, and people were excited. I fuck with this 100%. Let's go, Kerbal. But behind the scenes, the game kept going downhill. Hey, real quick, so this video is sponsored by you guys. My name's Alex. I've been making video games for eight years. Here are my qualifications. And if you're interested at all in learning to make video games, check out the first link in the description. Basically, it's a bunch of courses all in one package similar to Udemy, except I hold your hand, I give you one-on-one -on -one help through calls and messages if you get stuck, and there's like a community component where you can meet and chat with other people on the same journey. So pretty cool, first link in the description, back to the video you came here to watch. Already past the planned release date, in early 2020, the game was nowhere near finished, and they had only a skeleton crew of inexperienced engineers, but at least they were able to catch a slight break. See, by mid-2021, with KSP1 finished, the original developers that worked on that game were finally able to join the team of the sequel, and progress sped up. Despite this, by 2022, the game was still nowhere near being shipped. So, Take-Two finally made an ultimatum. They had to ship something in a year by February 2023. The game was stripped down to just a sandbox version, and all the major planned features like multiplayer and colonies were cancelled to be added later in a future version of the game. The release date just crept closer, and a few months before release, its most senior graphics engineer left the project. Why, you may ask? Well, apparently Take-Two wasn't willing to pay its staff over $150,000 per year, which led to some key members leaving. But crucially, with this guy leaving, the shader code was hugely unoptimized optimized, leading to performance problems on release. Only a PC directly from NASA would be able to run it. Most people simply do not have access to such high-end PC specs. When the game finally launched into early access, what was delivered for the full price of 50 bucks was a buggy mess, with no colonies and no multiplayer. Matt Lone sat down to play the game for a few hours and a Reddit user was able to find 42 total bugs six of which were completely game-breaking, such as the spacecraft exploding for no reason. According to the January 2023 Steam hardware survey, only 33% of Steam users meet the minimum requirements to play this game, and only the elite, 4%, can meet the recommended specs. The game only had a 31% positive review rates. One of the main issues with the game being secret was not integrating the community early on into development to see what they actually wanted. Honestly, all I wanted was all the best graphics mods integrated into the game and maybe better aerodynamics and maybe like some way to actually write code against it and the ability mm -hmm. to change out the planets simply you know these were all things that could have been very easily added and they would have merited sure they could have sold it as a 2.0 and by this point the game's face was pretty much sealed early access has also given us detailed awareness of the state of a very large very complicated game and the main focus was just fixing bugs and releasing the science updates which finally came out later that year but unfortunately it was clear that the game was just hemorrhaging money the best current estimates of steam sales alone today sit at over 24 million dollars and the best estimates place the cost that went into the project at over $60 million. We arrived at almost $40 million for the Intercept Games era alone in costs. Add to that the Star Theory years plus costs for buying the intellectual property from Squad 
and we can easily calculate 60 million dollars that have went into Kerbal Space Program 2 so far. And so the inevitable happened. By the end of 2024, to the best of our knowledge, the studio closed and the game was done for. Um, I, I, I fought right up to the last second and was had managed to fully convince myself that somehow, through some some miracle, we were gonna find a way to pull it out right up to the end. Even with the best of intentions, the game bit off more than it could chew, and its secrecy set off chains of events that led to its downfall. However, mistakes do happen. And what's most important is that we can take away lessons from case studies like these. In the description, I've linked two YouTube videos that were crucial in researching this video, if you want a deeper look. And if you want to learn to make games, there's also a link to my program down there too. Thanks so much for watching, and if you subscribe, I will see you in the next one. Bye.